All right, everyone, I'm not exactly a fan of Tulsi Gabbard. Like, she's one of the more sane people in the Democratic field at the moment, other than her feelings about guns, I suppose. Uh, but she, but she's, she's semi-sane. I'm not a huge fan of her, though. Uh, but that being said, even a broken clock is occasionally right, and so now she's suing, she's suing Google for, like, $50 million because in the wake of the debate... She was like the most uh, the most Googled candidate or something in a lot of states. I remember at the time it was basically Warren in Oklahoma, Cory Booker in parts of the South, and, and elsewhere was Tulsi Gabbard. Beforehand, it had been like Warren, Biden, and Sanders, like the, like the big three, Kamala in a couple states, but after it was different. And so Tulsi Gabbard sort of did knock it out of the park, and she was hoping to capitalize upon that momentum by gaining uh, by gaining more power by putting out like ads on Google but for like a couple of days thereafter she was blocked from doing so and so they said well you know we're calculating damage basically at 50 million dollars that she otherwise may have been able to pull in uh, by advertising her existence by making it clear yes hey by the way I exist and so forth um, in in this lawsuit it's difficult to tell exactly how much actual revenue she would have gotten but the fact is it's interesting to see finally a democrat addressing the issue like, like again gabbard's gun rights bullshit aside the fact that she would get screwed by google in the direct sense or feels that she got screwed it's very funny how opportunistic it almost is uh, but then again i mean still technically an ally in the fight against tech censorship uh, that's really what it boils down to it's like um I don't want to say an enemy of my enemy argument. You know, I'm obviously I'm using a Google service right now in so far as YouTube and then also Blogspot. I don't have Google's less bad than like Facebook or something, but they are censorious. They're developing algorithms that demote people like me, independent content creators, and so now Gabbard fi finally a Democrat gets in the same boat as people who are perceived of as being on the right or perceive themselves as being on the right, or in my case, libertarians, just independent content creators in general. Finally, someone on the left, you know, in, in many ways, gets fucked by one of these big tech firms and comes around to the astonishing realization that censorship, is, uh, tech censorship is a problem. Now she cares. I see it as a little bit, it is a little bit opportunistic. It's like basically, well, it was never a problem before when it was little people getting fucked out of ad revenue. Now it's my campaign, so now I mean business. But... And this is the thing I've been saying now for three years. This is how the moral panic ends. This is how the current paradigm of tech companies attempting to squish out independent commentary and stuff actually ends. Because what ends up happening with a moral panic, and I've mentioned this explicitly before, before this case came to light, what happens is with a moral panic at first it's being fronted by opportunistic individuals that is you you perceive of some sort of problem it can be more or less real in an objective sense you have some sort of problem a moral failing uh, crime uh, terrorism whatever it happens to be a group that is seeking to get money and power will take that issue amplify it sell it to the public to all the soccer moms say look this is a huge problem blah 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 they'll use their connections within the media They'll sensationalize. Uh, they did this with shock jocks. They've done this with violent video games. They've done this certainly with the internet, you know, like like violent shit or, or whatever on their porn on the internet. They did this with, with leftism back in the 50s and 60s. They did this with drugs. This is why the drug war has existed. You t the moral panic, the idea is that you take an issue, which, which there's a kernel of truth to it being an issue, like, like, there was always a kernel of truth. Yes, drugs, addiction has been a problem. The drug war, though, is not prefaced on, hey, sometimes people get addicted to these substances. And what it did was it made a, a power and profit sort of structure thereof that doesn't actually help anyone. It doesn't address the initial <laughs> the core problem. It addresses the boogeyman, the fake problem that's been extrapolated from the initial problem in order to enrich a bunch of people who are already rich to begin with. That's beginning to break down, by the way. The, the, the war on everything, the prison system wages, is starting to decline. 
we see the decline of the drug war. That's sort of technically a Reagan-era institution, although it goes back further. I've tried to tell people the drug war is actually 100 years old, and they don't understand what I mean because they've been told falsehoods about Nixon and Reagan. That's, that's just, Nixon is war on marijuana more than anything else. And Reagan is sort of the just say no, you know, gateway drug bullshit, the crack epidemic. The drug war was waged on opium dens and shit like that a hundred years ago with reefer madness, so don't get me started on that. But here's how the moral panic ends. What happens is that rich, moneyed, powerful individuals, Tulsi Gabbard's no lightweight, they get fucked by the moral panic. The moral panic becomes so atrociously large that it starts biting the hand that initially fed it. That is politicians the rich, the famous, the, the elite, essentially. Once they start feeling the pinch, they very quickly dismantle it, and they stop talking about the panic, and it deflates. Because the soccer moms and shit that empower the moral panic have very low attention spans. Ultimately, if you were to stop haranguing, if the legacy media today were to stop haranguing about extremist YouTubers, which is not a threat to society, extremism online, hate speech online, we need to do more, Russian interference. If the legacy media stopped haranguing about that, 99% of the people who right now think that YouTube is, is ushering in the Antichrist in the end times would no longer think that in a month. That's how short their attention span is. You have to continuously pump the moral panic. The problem is that by doing that, you cause it to spiral out of control until the power structure is attacked, until someone like Tulsi Gabbard is targeted by Google, and then they sue, and then the tech firms start refusing to enforce some of the more draconian uh, uh, censorship that they've been asked to enforce, and the whole thing falls apart. That's why I've said short-term pain, long-term gain. Long-term, I'm optimistic about... The, the internet of everything is not going anywhere. Independent content creation is now something everybody fucking does. People carry their phones around and upload shit constantly. They take pictures and video and make little blurbs online. It's going to keep happening. At some point, there might be a backlash and people might start going like rural... Like, people will go back to the Amish sort of feeling. But, but ultimately, the internet of everything instant communication, um, the, the content creation, that's not going anywhere. It, it simply won't. The idea that the tech firms will have carte blanche to crack down on everything, to sanitize the entire internet of everything into an on-demand service, that's not going to happen. Ultimately, there will always be alternatives. Right now, you can see it looming. Uh, look, the government wants to come in and regulate things. Some Somewhat uh, uh, misled plans, but there is obviously a backlash against the private sector, so-called, that's begun to censor people. And I think the banking institutions are the ones that need to be addressed the most. The idea that a bank should be able to cut someone short because they say the wrong thing politically, I think is extremely worrisome and dystopian. Uh, I think that if the average person knew that was going on, I think that they would oppose it. The idea that, the idea that mean words on Twitter are the same as, as rabble-rousing and inciting violence like a la maybe the, the, the racial tension of the 80s or the 90s or something, it's totally different. Uh, I think people will eventually come to realize this. Tulsi Gabbard, therefore, suing Google, it's total opportunism, but it's a symbol of the beginning of the end of the moral panic. Things are darkest before dawn. I've said this for a couple of years. They will improve. You already see, uh, copyright-wise, look, the, uh, the American companies are starting to move kind of in the right direction. They're probably doing that to preempt the EU. That's about all. Peace out.